tree tube, if you haven't seen that, I recommend you to go and check out the exercise on the tree tube so you can compare it. The orifice meter is pretty similar, you have a volumetric flow rate in the pipe, you have a diameter, normal operation of the pipe, and you have a diameter of the orifice or the trope. Actually, I prefer to call this orifice because the throat is actually for the venturi tube, so don't mix that. We have a volumetric flow rate. They tell you what is the maximum, uh, let's say, power if we want to operate 50 cubic meters per hour. Recall that the density of mercury is 13,600 because this is mercury, normally is mercury, and the that of water is 1,000. The normal diameter is 100 millimeters, and they tell you to calculate or find out what's the throat's diameter. They tell you that the operator here read the delta height, and it's about 1.25 meters. So he wrote that, he doesn't know how much pressure drop is that, but you are the engineer and you will be able to calculate that, hopefully. So before actually doing something, I want to change this. It makes me crazy not to have seconds, so let me check this. And I got cubic meter per second, so I got SI units, perfect. Now the change in pressure is essentially the difference in density times gravity times the height, which the operator reported. So the change in density is this one. Mercury minus water, the change uh, sorry, the gravity 9.8 and the change on height, which is 1.25 meters. Calculate this and you find to be 154,000 pascals. And we got a little problem because we don't have the diameter. And since the, vo the velocity is function of volumetric flow rate and area, we will need to use another equation. It's just multiplied by density and we will get the mass flow. Okay, so what I want you to do is essentially calculate this. Let's force the area right here so we can have the outside diameter which is right here. CV recall it's 61 for this application. The ratio beta is just the small diameter versus the big diameter. Two times the change on pressure and this density is given because I am multiplying by density, if I multiply density I will have it here and if I want to get it inside I will have density to the square and recall that the normal function has only one density so this density will go with this and you get the density up. So perfect, let's calculate for the diameter we have this right here. So let me erase everything. So we have this cube we have the density, yes, we have the pressure drop, yes, we have density, yes, we have the ratio, yes. And actually we don't have the ratio because we don't have the throat diameter. We have the diameter of the pipe but not the throat so we cannot calculate this. This is a constant and this is also a constant so actually I have here two variables. What you can do is to solve for D. So we have this, send this dividing, send this dividing, and what you get is this number right here. And then recall that beta is this inside, this number inside, the orifice diameter and the pipe's diameter, and I send it right here. And actually, let me also solve for this. So I want this equation. I force this equation so I get the definition of diameter of the orifice with respect, of course, of the diameter of the orifice. This is impossible to solve. You will never solve it. So we will need to, let's say, assume diameters and check if equation number one actually gives us a similar value. So let's say we assume 0.01. We plug 0 0.01 here, and 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.1 is 1 tenth to the fourth power, and then 1 minus that. Then take out the square root and multiply it by this, and all, once again, square root, you should get 0 0.041.
So compare 0 0.041, which is the new diameter, versus the old diameter, 0 0.01. This means that we need to increase the diameter. So you can do that, or I also love doing is choosing the old diameter as a the new one. You could propose other diameter, but I like using the old one, so let's do it. Do exactly the same. Plug this 0 0.041 here and get all this value. And you will get the value of the diameter. And in this case, I get something pretty near. Actually, it's 43, so let me take away. And I check it here. I do the same. And finally, I get conversion. It converged. So I will say this is the final answer. This is my diameter which is 0 0.041 meters or 41 millimeters which comp so guys probably you're wondering where do I get all the material I use so for example graphs uh, tables or whatever data I've been using too and I got all the material I'll use in the course in the library section so for example you need any graph chart or whatever media you need it's included in here go to here and you will be able to for example find out where I get the density of common liquids, where I got ASME pipe sizing, where I get K values for fitting and valves, where or how I calculate vapor pressure, and go to the incompressible flow course and eventually you gotta click register. Pair with the 100 millimeters, it's okay, it's almost the half. Good, and not only I wanted to calculate the diameter, I want to calculate the power requirement. So let me calculate. How much friction are we generating? So from this figure, we're going to calculate the loss. So we have beta is the diameter of the orifice divided by the pipe's diameter. We got 0 0.41. So let me find out 0 0.41. You go here, and I got something about here. So it's the loss factor is 81%. Okay. What does that mean is that I need to multiply that percent with respect of the change on pressure, which is right here. But since I actually I should have done this before, it will give me the friction. And once I have the friction, I multiply it by the volumetric flow rate to calculate this right here. And I got the power consumption. So this one, if you checked out the Venturi tube before, this one is a little bit more tricky because we don't have diameter of the orifice. And because everything is based on the diameter of the orifice or the throat, we got problems. We had to make this equation right here and propose many diameters and wait until we converge into a value. In this case, it was pretty easy. 0 0.01 goes directly to 0 0.041. I try 0 0.041 again and I see that it won't change so that's why I choose 0 0.01 41 millimeters and uh, yeah essentially it's everything guys if you want to check even more complex problems go and check out the course see you in the next video this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access, not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So, for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. You were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.